Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. I've been asked to make a video specifically on starting solenoids. And I just want to take, and obviously this is a starting solenoid, and I just want to take a moment to look at the solenoid and look at the diagram and to go back and forth just, just a couple of times. This side of the starting solenoid goes up to the starter. It's the positive wire on the starter. And a lot of times when you guys see me doing a bypass, what I have is I have one wire on ground, one of my 12 volt, the negative 12 volt lead on ground. And I just touch this and I'm putting 12 volts directly to the starter. The good thing about that is if the start is any good, it's going to turn around. The bad thing about that, if I clip the wire on and I start the bike and I'm running it and gunning it and so forth, the starter is still spinning and you could start breaking things. So, um, just, I, I do it, you know, but one of those things, try not to do, the, do it at home unless you know what you're up to. So. We got one one of the four wires identified that go on a typical starting solenoid. The second wire, this one here, this goes out to the battery. Okay, bolts directly to the battery. This wire is just a bridge off of the battery, so to speak. And it would probably goes to a fuse and eventually it would go to a key switch, you, you know, and from the key switch you would do lights and so forth and, and on. This is just a way of hooking a wire to the battery to run everything else for the quad. So, though it's here, it is not a necessary, well, I guess it could be a necessary part of the uh, starting story so let's just hold the extra red wire for a moment a lot of times they run a wire directly from the battery to power everything else now you have two more wires green whenever you see green you should always be thinking about ground so put that in the back of your head and yellow yellow for this actually energizes a coil in the starter that basically closes a switch between here and here which means now you have the battery going directly into the starter and you go around. So somehow you have to figure out how to energize this coil. Right? And this is going to take a second to explain. Let's talk about the ground side of this coil first. A lot of times um, this one doesn't have neutral. If you step on the gas, it goes. But a lot of times, they'll have it set up that if you're not neutral, you cannot start the engine. Sometimes they have it that you need to lock the brake. Um, and what that is doing, that's just grounding this wire directly to ground. So now you have, you're grounded on this side, and all you have to do is power up this side you engage the coil, you close the switch, your starter goes around. And that could be kind of complicated looking. And the way you start that is you start at 12 volts. This is your battery. And in this case, right, it could be this lead, right, battery up to this lead, goes to a fuse box, right? So 12 volts. Typically you go to a fuse. A lot of times you go to a key switch. Then you go to a starter button. And when you push that starter button, right, your key is on, you push the starter button, you energize this coil, right, your neutral safety switch, that's closed, which means you have power going through the coil, the coil closes the contacts, and round and round the starter goes. It is that simple for your typical starting circuit. Just for a moment, I'm also going to talk about charging. These are the wires that come from the flywheel area, the stator and so forth. Notice you got two wires here, yellow and white or yellow and pink. 
Um, sometimes you get two yellow wires, sometimes two white ones, sometimes two pink ones. What this means is you have two coils in there that as the flywheel goes round and round, those coils, you're getting AC power off of them. And those are known as stator coils. One side of the stator coil is grounded. The other side comes out two wires once again. They could be yellow or white or pink or combos of all those. Typically these two wires go into a voltage regulator and this is the voltage regulator. Typically voltage regulators have fins on them, right? You can kind of see fins down there. So those two wires go into a voltage regulator and what the voltage regulator does, it takes somewhere between 20 and 40 volts AC and that's if you're spinning this at 3600 RPM. Um, I frequently have trouble making these measurements. So I caution people on making, I call them dynamic measurements. Dynamic, you know, something's happening and you're trying to catch a real-time measurement. I typically have a lot of trouble making these measurements. And by the way, I'm an electrical engineer. And all I can think about it is perhaps the frequency here isn't quite what your meter wants to see. So it doesn't see, it doesn't pick them up or um, really, that's about the only thing I can think of, unless, unless the, the pulse has a weird shape to it or duration. It really shouldn't. It should just be an AC pulse. But for whatever reason, I've, I've attempted to make a lot of these measurements and not ha have had a lot of luck. Though, I must say, I've, see the way these are covered with plastic, right? The, the yellow and the white. I call them. Um, something's coming out of those wires because they cover them with plastic so you don't short them to ground and kill whatever is trying to come out of there, right? Um, that leads to heat and coils melting and other such damage. Anyway, I've, I've been, um, let's use the word, juiced by these wires. So there's definitely something coming out of there frequently. Um, but when it comes to measuring them, I've not had much luck. But should you have success measuring them, you should see between the yellow, yellow, white and pink, white and yellow, whatever, you should see somewhere between 20 and 40 volts AC. And if you go from like yellow to ground or pink to ground, I don't know, 12 volts. But that's at 3600 RPM, okay? And that's AC, alternating. Um, those go into a voltage regulator. The voltage regulator does two things. It turns that AC power into DC power because your battery wants DC power to charge up, right? And it also regulates the, power, the, the voltage down to 12 volts so that you don't overcharge your battery and cook it. So typically out of your voltage regulator is a green, is a red wire which is positive 12 volts. Then there's a green wire, or sometimes there's a green and black wire, or sometimes there's only a black wire. That is ground. Um, and that's it. You've just learned everything you need to know about starting circuits, right? Positive 12 volts into here, right? That gives you one side. Um, when you energize the coil, it closes that switch. That's your starter right there, and that's ground. Starter is typically bolted right to the case. That's where it gets ground from. Um, do these go bad? Oh, yeah. Um, most common problem I've had is ground. Sometimes these are hooked to uh, ground on the body. And this connection and that connection aren't very good, which means that as you go to start up your starter or you go to energize your coil, so to speak, you do not get a good connection and you don't close the switch. You don't have ground, right? Because once again, you got your ground wire hooked to the body and you got your negative from the battery hooked to um, 
to your engine block. So that's one problem I've seen. I've also seen it where I've put the negative on the body here and I've, you know, put the positive directly on the starter and you get nothing or sometimes you'll see a sizzle and a pop come from, from those. Grounding is the most common, most, most, most common problem I've seen with, um, with these things. You think you're grounded because you have ground on the engine but it turns out something's hooked to the frame and the engine and the frame aren't tight together. And by the way, by tight together, you might check these with an ohm meter and see only 0.1 ohms or something like that. But when you're trying to go put 30, 40 amps to make your starter go round, um, that might not be a good enough hookup, right? Sometimes also, um, when a lot of times the coil, the ignition coil, is on the body, not on the on the frame. I've had a lot of troubles where I lose spark because my ignition coil isn't properly grounded. This green is ground. Um, and the ground is for the stator, stator coil here. A lot of times it's also ground for the pulse generator. But sometimes they don't run ground. Sometimes they rely on the body. Um, once again, I've been, I'm an electrical engineer and I've been burned by not having proper grounds. So whenever, for whatever reason, you don't have a spark, start thinking about grounds. Whenever your starter wound engage, start thinking about grounds. And by ground, I mean the battery hooked to this, the battery hooked to this if you're trying to get your switches to work. Sometimes they pick up, you know, you got to make sure your grounds are continuous. Whenever you think of electricity, when I lose my diagram, whenever you think of electricity, you should always be thinking about a loop, right? 12 volts through that, through that to ground, right? There's a loop, right? 12 volts to all those switches to ground. Once again, a loop. You should always be thinking about that. And if you don't have it, you're not starting. Anyway, um, I've been asked specifically for this video, so I'm making it. Once again, hopefully at the end of this, you understand starting solenoids a little bit better. You understand the key switch. I've more or less been through the entire DC uh, version of a quad. The only other thing is, right, I mean, headlight, <laughs> switch, right, one side of the headlights at ground, you have one side of the switch at positive, when you turn the switch on, goes to the other side of the switch, goes through the headlight, right to ground, right, there's your headlights, there's your lights, that's simple. Um, any questions, please ask. Um, I want to get this up because I promised this, this to somebody a while ago and I have wanted to do it as part of the china quad quad discussion and um it just it just i wasn't getting to it quick enough so i decided to go separate okay everyone i want to thank you all for watching and commenting subscribing if you like this splitty video please give me a thumbs up and let me know and if you don't you want to give me a thumbs down go for it but please tell me why all right take care everyone bye now